Hello, the pioneer viewers. We continue to bring you the agenda of the Russia-Ukraine war. The war processes, which is approaching its second year, has witnessed very interesting developments in recent days. The ongoing clashes on the front line bring with them mutual losses, and the parties are looking for ways to compensate for their losses and increase their gains. A strong coordination network is necessary to solve the problems that arise in times of war. The states must establish a functional organization network by using the means that their disposal effectively. Otherwise, problems arising from the system will cause politicians to face public backlash. Managing the process and maintaining good public relations is an important skill. When the situation in the country deteriorates, the public will first and foremost hold politicians to account. The politicians need to be accountable to the public. There has been many developments following Russia's invasion attempt against Ukraine. Russia's description of the invasion as a special military operations was insufficient. With the start of invasion, a wide area of conflict emerged. Russia had and still has problems fighting soldiers to send to the war. Mobilization laws and strict regulations on the military service caused many young Russians to flee the country. In addition, many Russian soldiers surrendered to the Ukrainian troops on the battlefields. Faced with a shortage of military personnel, the Russian army is trying to cover the deficiencies by the sending back the soldiers on duty. Soldiers and their families who have been on the front line for much longer than the contract stipulates are complaining about the situation. The families of the soldiers who recently stormed Vladimir Putin's elections office are becoming the voice of the rising opposition in Russia. Authoritarian conditions in Russia prevent activists such as demonstrations and protests, but families of soldiers do not care. They continue to protest as they did in the previous days. In addition, Ukraine's defense continues to strengthen and there are reports of important developments in defense plans. Now, if you're ready, let's examine the latest developments together. As the pioneer, we continue to report on Russia-Ukraine war. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so as not to miss our daily map reports and reports on the agenda. I also read all your comments on our videos. Please continue to share your ideas about our content in the comments. Tell us in the comments what content you would like to see on the Pioneer channel. Let's assert if you are ready. The Pioneer reports. The families of soldiers in the Russian army make an insignificant group across Russia. The people of Russia, who have suffered many hardships throughout the war, are now worried about that never-ending war. It is known that Russia is facing military personal problems. In order to provide soldiers to fight on the front, many methods have been tried, such as advertising in neighboring countries, but without success. The Moscow administration, on the other hand, cancelled the leaves of the military personnel in order to close the military deficits and stated that no one will return home until the second order. Many Russian soldiers, including those whose contracts have expired, face this problem. The families of the soldiers are expressing their reactions to both to the difficult conditions on the front line and the endless military service. The opportunity of Vladimir Putin, the president of the Russian Federation, has started to decline recently. Putin, around whom the people of Russia relied, is now heavily criticized by certain segments of the public. These criticisms are based on the war and the economy. Some family members of the Russian soldiers have been particularly vocal, openly protesting against the war or directly challenging Putin. A video posted the other day by the Ukrainian interior advisor Anton Grashchenko shows two women having a tense conversation with a Putin campaign official. The wives of men in Russian army went to Putin's election centers to find out what should be done to get their husbands back from the front, Groschenko said in the video. The families of the soldiers who went to the election center did not get the results and answers they wanted. The answers given by the official in charge of the election office to the families of the soldiers caused the reactions to grow. The families of the soldiers said that the answer given by the officials at the election office were very frustrating. The official said that it was not possible to allow the soldiers to return home, insulting their dignity. Angered by this, the soldiers' families argued with the official. The families of the soldiers say that they have suffered enough from the war and now the soldiers should come home. The families of soldiers have been protesting since the first days of the war. They have submitted their demands many times but have not yet received a response, trying to struggle in the midst of the shocking allegations Russian families 
trying to circle in the midst of the shocking allegations soldiers' families are worried and anxious. The families of soldiers who claim that Russian military is using the soldiers have repeatedly sent petitions to Putin demanding accountability. Earlier this month, the Moscow wives, daughters and mothers of the Russian soldiers protested against the war and the conditions for their loved ones by placing flowers on the symbolic grave. Russian political analyst Dmitry Oreshkin said the protest, which is not yet too dangerous for authorities, is being provenced by the redoubled cautions, especially ahead of the March presidential election. The political environment in Russia seems quite tense. Any unrest within Russia ahead of the upcoming elections could be disturbing for Putin. Therefore, while opposing movements are on the rise, Putin's policies may soften. Ukraine, on the other hand, has proven its strength and continues to increase. The news that quickly hit the agenda emerged with the Ukrainian army brought a new tool to support defense. Mikhail Fetorov, Ukraine's Minister of Digital Transformation, made some statements about the Ukrainian drone that was recently imaged. Fedorov stated that the vehicles used by Kiev to jam Russian FPV drones are actively used in the Ukrainian army. Fedorov said that the tripped muted AD counter F PV systems was developed by members of the Ukrainian Brave One research program launched by Ukrainian April as part of the efforts to accelerate the developments of the military technology. The Ukrainian military's portable systems works by the intercepting radio communications between Russian drones and their operators in the less than a second. Fedorov said that the system is 6.6 .6 pounds cheaper and can be installed on the vehicle. Drones played a key role during the Russia-Ukraine war, with Ukraine relying heavily on its own drones army for much of these conflicts. This important development, which changed the course of the war, is due to the Ukrainian military's effective use of drones. Last month, Fedorov said that it's difficult for Ukraine to compete with Russia on quantity, as Moscow has much more money to develop and produce drones. The important point is to be above a certain level in terms of quality and equipment. This is what they are working for, Fedorov said, adding that they will work until the day Ukraine is victorious. What do you think about the read of Putin's elections office? How do you think Vladimir Putin is managing the process? How do you assess the Ukraine's army's counterattacks and gains? Do you think the Ukrainian army has increased its defense capabilities? We care about your opinion. Please share it with us.